Hey guys, welcome back. In this fourth lesson for the official Bolt series, we're going to set up the death mechanic for our player controller. So what I want to do is when I walk into the spikes, I want to die, right? The spikes mean death for my player. So when I touch the spikes, we're going to fire off a collision event, and we want to know what to do when that happens. So let's set this up. So whenever the player comes in contact with the spikes, it's going to count as a death. And when the player dies, all I want to do is reload the current scene that our player is in. And to do that, I am going to fire off an event from the spikes on collision. So let's see how we can do that. So I want to send an event from the spikes to the player. And one way we can do that is by creating a custom event that we can simply give a string name to. So to do this, I'm going to create a new unit and I'm going to type in custom event. Now I have custom event and trigger custom event. So custom event is where I define the actual event and give it a name or parameters. And trigger custom event is when I decide I'm going to fire off that event. So in our player, we're just simply going to define the event and react to the event being fired off. So for this, I'm simply going to name the event death and no arguments are required for this event. So now from spikes, whenever I trigger this event, the flow is going to come right out of this. And what are we going to do with it? Well, I want to simply reload the current scene. So I'm going to type in load scene. And then I have some options here. I want to load scene by the scene name. Simple as that. But now I need the string value for the scene name. What is the scene name? Well, I could look and see, okay, this is level one. So I can type in level one. But that would only work on level one. What about if I die on level four or level 12? I want to simply reload level 12 and not level one, right? So one way I can do this is I can grab the current scene's name and then load it based on that. So to do that, I'll create a new unit right here and it's going to be active scene. I want to get the active scene. So whatever scene I'm in, this will return that scene. Pretty cool. And from this, it outputs a scene value which I can grab the scene name from because all this needs is the scene name in string form, right? So I'm going to drag this out and I have the option now to go to the scenes namespace and I can simply do get name and then just drag the string value into the scene name port. Now, whenever this event is fired off, my scene manager will load the currently selected scene based on its name. Pretty cool. So I'm going to select this, move it down here, hit shift space, and I'm going to create another section, another group here. And I will call it death. Now what I have to do is trigger this event from my spikes. So whenever the player touches the spikes, the spikes are going to say, okay, the player collided with me. I'm going to send out this event. And then whatever is subscribed, in this case, simply listening to the event with this custom event unit here, it will fire off and do whatever it's supposed to do. So on my spikes object in my level, I am going to add a flow machine, just as we did for the player. And I want to create a new macro for this as well. It's going to be in my macros folder and I will call it spikes. There we go. And now for this, I do not need the start event or the update event. All I need is an event that detects whenever I have collided with another collider object. So I'm going to type in on collision enter, and that gives me on collision enter 2D because we need the 2D version. And from this, all I have to do is check the thing that we collided with to see if it matches what I'm looking for. So if the spikes collided with the player, then I need to send out that event that says the player should die. So to do that, I'll drag collider out. And what I want to do is compare tag. So my player has the player tag on it. So I want to see, does the thing I'm colliding with have the player tag on it? So I'll say game object compare tag, and it's going to take a game object as a parameter on the input node here. And we're going to compare it to a tag. And I'm just going to type in the tag of player. So is this object we're colliding with a player? What if it is? What I want to do is I want to fire off that event, right? So I'll type in a custom event again. And this time I want the trigger custom event. And this allows me again to define the arguments, but I'm simply going to type in the name of the event that I defined, which is death. But I only want to trigger this event if the object I collided with was the player. So to do this, all I have to do, as I'm sure you know, is add a branch here that will allow me to decide what to do 
based on the value of the bool. So I'm going to pass this bool in just like that and then pass the flow whenever the event is fired off into the branch. And then if it is in fact true, I want to pass the flow from the branch into the trigger event unit. So now if we do in fact trigger the event for collision and we do match the tag to player, then we want to fire off the event. But here's the thing, we want to fire off the event on the player, on the thing we collided with. So we want to know where we're looking for that event at. At the moment it's looking on itself, on the self object, so in this game object, spikes. What I want it to look at is the object we're colliding with. So I'm going to drag collider directly into the game object port there and it will infer from the collider that it wants to get the game object the collider is attached to. So now it knows to go to the player game object to fire off that event if it does match the player tag. So let's see what happens. So now if we fall into the spikes, I reload the current scene. Pretty cool. So now we can die and have to restart the level over from the beginning. In the next lesson, we're going to look at setting up the collision event for our objective here that will then send us to the next level. My name is Austin, and I will see you in the next lesson.